Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter aka Coding Made Easy coming to you guys with your next C Sharp tutorial. And this and then uh, and in this tutorial we're gonna be learning about the for loop or as some people like to call it the counted loop, but I would advise you to call it the for loop because that is what it is by convention. Uh, but it might be easier for you to remember it by the counted loop. Now the for loop out of the three loops that we're going to be learning about, the for loop is the hardest loop and that's why I teach it first. Now you might be wondering why I teach it first, um, wouldn't that be kind of backwards? Well, by learning the harder one first, the other ones come really easy. Um, so we, we'll get this one out of the way and then we'll learn the two other types of loops uh, after this video, after this tutorial. So anyways, uh, the syntax for a for loop goes as follows. So it has three different parts, okay? So first we put for and we put our parentheses. Now there's three different parts to it. The first part specifies variable initialization. So we, uh, for this, I'll put an integer. And it's by convention that usually when you're using a counter, using like a for loop, uh, for people usually use I. So I believe I would stand for index. Uh, so usually by convention, I is used. Um, so yeah, so we can declare a variable in the first part. The second part comes the comparison. So the, uh, the, the comparison statement. So this is just like the Boolean uh, that we did with the if statements. So right here we can compare different values and this will determine uh, what happened uh, or when our loop will stop counting or when our loop will stop executing. Okay, uh, so this is I should say the condition. So in here I'm going to say i is less than or equal to 10. So the condition is that we're going to keep looping while i is less than or equal to 10 basically so uh that is how we're reading it out so the third part and notice that we separate each part by a semicolon so we have the first part the second part and the third part is for increasing the variable's value now i haven't taught you guys this yet but in in the other tutorials we learned that if we want to add something to a variable we could do something like this we could say health is equal to health uh plus oh sorry we could do 100 and we could have a new variable a variable and we could say well, actually never mind say health is equal to health plus 10. and so that will um that will set health to 110 so whatever health is it will replace with the value 100 and we'll say 100 plus 10 and that's what we'll, we'll do and if we want to add one then we'd say um, health plus one now there's a, there's some shortcuts that we can use so instead of saying if we want to add one to a variable we don't have to do the equals blah 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 because programmers are really um, lazy so we can do plus plus and when you do health plus plus that means you're adding one to that integer variable so uh, if you ever heard of the language uh, C++ plus plus uh, C++ plus plus is uh, an interesting fact I guess is C++ plus plus is a sort of an advanced version of C so that's where they got C++ plus plus from C plus one and so you have uh, the plus plus symbol which means add one to it uh, so maybe that'll help you remember it and so if we want to we can do the same thing for uh negative so subtractions we can do two minus signs to subtract one from a variable now if we want to add more than one then we have a dilemma because now the only way we know how to do it is health equals health plus 10 but we can use a plus equals plus equals means it says health whatever whatever is in front of it so we have health take that value and add whatever sorry whatever value is to the right so basically it will say health plus equals 10 so therefore this value will return 110 so that's a different it's just a different way of writing this basically so now we're gonna 
utilize the first one so we're just going to say i plus plus so it's just going to add one to i so this is the order that it's going to go in so it's going to say okay when we start our for loop it's going to say okay i see that in the first part you want to create a variable called i now this variable only exists within this scope so within these braces like if i try to access i outside here and i try to print it out as you can see i doesn't exist we get a we'll, you'll get a red squiggly uh so it only exists within the scope right here so we say okay we're going to set a variable i and we're going to set it initially to zero and then we're going to check our condition is our condition being met is i less than or equal to 10 yes it is so it's going to execute what's in here so right now i'm just going to say um iteration or we'll, we'll just we'll just print console right line we'll just print i so then what's going to happen is once it prints that and it reaches the end of the loop it goes to this section of the for loop and it adds one to i and so i will be equal to one then it will check the condition again is one less than ten yes it is okay execute what's in here goes back to i adds one blah blah, blah until the condition is not met anymore and when that condition is not met anymore then we um we end so if we run this as you can see it prints numbers from 0 to 10 so um that is basically how for loops work now as i told you we have three sections but we don't necessarily have to put anything in any of these sections right so we can put nothing if we do this we'll get an infinite loop and our program will keep looping until our computer crashes or whatever or something bad happens but it will loop forever so there's no condition to check so it's just going to keep looping forever so if we didn't want to initialize a variable in here we could easily initialize a variable i out here we can initialize anything we want a variable j and we can check the condition here is less than 10 and then we hit add to j over here right so we don't actually have to specify a variable in here but by convention usually you would right you don't have to put a condition there but normally you would you don't have to add anything here but usually you would right so let's do a condition where we don't add it in here but we're going to add it down here so we're going to say in i is equal to zero we're going to do the same thing so even if you don't have anything in the section you still have to put the semicolon to let it know that that section is done even though there's nothing there because the semicolons separate each section so we're not putting anything in the third section right here and what we're going to do is we're just going to do um console right line i plus plus as you can see we still get zero to ten because although we didn't set it here once we do console right line it says i plus plus and yada yada but one thing we have to know how come we didn't how come we didn't print the value one right isn't i plus plus adding one to i as you can see when we run this program we got zero to ten so i didn't get added to it until after right so what if we wanted to add one to i before it actually sets the value we can put plus plus in front of it and if we do that, then it will add one to i before execution. Now, if you notice here, it goes from one to 11. Why did it print out the number 11? Well, it's simple. It says we're looping from i is less than or equal to 10. So what happened was when i was equal to 10, we said print plus plus one. So it said, okay, print 11, add one to the value and print that. Then when it got back here, i was equal to 11 oh it's done okay let's exit that's essentially how it works so um just to not confuse with the plus plus the plus plus means add one before you check the value of i or the value of any variable it is if you put the plus plus after or the minus minus you can work with plus plus or minus minus but the plus plus after it says return the value and then add to it later so yeah that is um if you're taking computer science or computer programming or anything i'm pretty sure you'll have something like that in a test 
Uh, so that is something good to note. So anyways, that's it for the for loop. I hope it wasn't too confusing, but if it was, please leave a comment below. Uh, and so thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.